This session will look at the resources of a business. Now, as you'll see from the bottom of the slide, there are 73 slides in this session, so it's quite a lengthy session. So I'm not going to labour each slide so we can get through it fairly efficiently. I would ask you, however, to stop the video when you're looking at it from time to time and make your own notes, make detailed notes and research your notes online as well. Pad them out so that it overall it makes sense to you uh, what the video is attempting to do. So we'll start by looking at the um, resources of the business. Now, uh, this is uh, from Johnson and Scholes, two famous writers in the area of business strategy, and they outline the various issues that are important in the formulation of a strategy, a business strategy. And you'll see amongst those highlighted is the idea of the configuration of resources. It's the use and employment of resources. Uh, the uh, overall capacity of the business to acquire the resources and to use the resources effectively. And we're going to concentrate on the resources in this session. We'll start by looking at financial resources. There are others, as we'll see, but we'll start with financial resources. And these are simply the ability of the business to finance its chosen strategy. For example, the business may uh, involve improvements in a new product development. So it may be looking to have a new product development and it needs financial resources to finance that. Or it could be new or improved distribution channels. It, it wishes to engage in different marketing, more effective marketing in perhaps even a different segment of the market. But it could be a different channel uh, so it wants to perhaps advertise on television and make a bigger a bigger splash in the market. It could be new production techniques or new capacity. That's a possibility. And that means that the investor would be looking towards some sort of innovative plan. New production techniques, new capacity, seeing why it's justifiable and what's involved. But there certainly are financial implications in doing this. More working capital is also an issue, a very important issue, because working capital is one of the bugbears of many businesses. In fact, many businesses go to the wall, go broke, because of their inability to handle working capital. Working capital is making sure that they have enough resources to manage on a day-to-day -day basis. So cash flow would be an issue here in, in this context. Um, but having enough working capital is essential for the min min maintenance and continuation of the business. And all of these will put a financial resource, a uh, financial strain on the business. Now an audit of financial resources would include an assessment of the following. What are the uh, financial resources uh, existing in the business? What, are, what resources does it have access to at the, business, uh, at the moment? These could be cash balances. Um, cash balances have to be managed. There could be too much cash balance so that it's not right to have too much in the bank because perhaps you want to take some, some of that cash out and invest it at a higher rate of return in some other asset. But perhaps what we call a near liquid asset, one that can be turned into cash very easily. But nonetheless, getting a higher rate of return. So the management of cash balances is also important. It could be a bank overdraft. Bank overdrafts, generally speaking, are expensive. Uh, so a business that's relying on bank overdrafts on a continual basis, well, there's something wrong. Uh, it doesn't look good for the business. A bank overdraft is a fix for a very short, should be a fix for a very short space of time, but certainly not long-term finance. Long-term finance should, should come from the bank if required. Borrow from the bank, 
the rate of interest is not as high as the overdraft and that's manageable. It could be from other parts as well, not just the banks, it could be from uh, other investors or other institutions. Of course it could also be from the shareholders. Um, the shareholders own the business and they may be willing to put more investment into the business if required in the future. So shareholders capital is also important. And working capital, as suggested earlier, stocks, debtors, they, that is, is also an important part of the business. It's, this is, the, this is the, the, the lifeline of the business. This is what the business does. Working capital could be stocks of finished goods, work in progress, or raw materials. Now I appreciate I'm speaking here like it's a, a manufacturing business. It could be a service business, for example, a law firm. Well, a law firm will have a stock of finished products, perhaps uh, finished cases they've dealt with but haven't received the payment yet. It could be work in progress, uh, items on the, on the desk at the moment, which are the, the law experts are working on at the moment to complete. Uh, they don't really have raw material, but uh, we can see other parts there. Creditors are also important uh, within the business because creditors uh, supply resources to the business. The suppliers may give raw materials or uh, give resources to the business on a short term basis so that they get paid at the end of the month perhaps so you the, the, you would have a month in which there is a, a free resource so creditors are an important resource also but of course it depends on the nature of the business depends also the relationship with the with the creditors it could be the government who's lent the money as well of course um now an audit of the financial resources would include an assessment of the following factors. For example, the ability to raise new funds. Now the ability to raise new funds is really a reflection of the reputation of the business. And the reputation of the business and the management team. If they've got a good track record, a good history in trading, they may find raising funds on the market easier than if they had a poor track record, if they had a history of not paying on time and um, perhaps not treating the workforce very well and issuing a, a product which is not completely fit for purpose or it's got a history perhaps. So the ability to raise new funds is really a reflection on the past history of the business. There's also, of course, the relationship between the investors and the lenders. Um, the investors will want to know that their investments are safe, or at least as safe as can be. They don't want a management team who are reckless. So the relationship between the two sets, the investors in the business and the business, is, is very important. Both sides must understand each other and they must trust each other so that's important um, attractiveness of the market in which the business operates well the product that the company is producing may be seen as old-fashioned or out of date or it hasn't been modified for a long time and uh, Perhaps new products have come onto the market, new competitors have appeared with more attractive products. So that's an issue. So the attractiveness on the market of the product may determine the company's ability to raise resources. Now these are issues associated with the financial resources of the business. Now I want to I know we're doing finance here, but I want to skip into the other resources just to give a more complete picture. So we're now going to look at human resources. 
through this fairly quickly, as I said. Um, Central to the success of any business is the workforce. Without the workforce, nothing will happen. Literally, nothing will happen. Everything will stay where it is. So it's the skill of the workforce that enables the production to take place, enables for the work to flow through. And this means there's a human resources uh, function. And this involves a skills audit. Well, it's a list of current skills in the business. It's important to capture what is it the workers can do. And then perhaps assess whether the current skills available within the business are appropriate for, for the, the given strategy, for the chosen strategy. Are, are the skills that are available correct? Or perhaps some sort of skills update will be required. A skills gap between the current skills and those needed will require investment in training or perhaps even more recruitment. An audit of the human resources would include an assessment of the following factors. Um, what are the existing staffing resources? Who's on the books and what can they do? The levels of staffing by function, location, grade, experience, qualification and remuneration. All of these things are important because as I said, without good staff nothing will happen. But it's not just listing the current state, it's also looking at the training facilities. What, um, what are the training facilities and how can they be brought to bear to improve the quality of the workforce. The level of morale in the business is also important. If, if people are not happy they will leave. Perhaps good workers will leave. So morale within the business must be kept high and that's a function of management to ensure that that happens. Now let's go across changes that are required to the resources. Well, the impact of a change in strategy on human resources through, for example, a change of location. Well, not everybody wants to move. New products and new associated work routines. Generally speaking, people resist change. So in order to get change implemented, the workforce must be brought along with the idea. There must be, it must be explained to them and it must be clear. They must understand what the implications are. Um, the, any additional resources that are required by the strategy or by a change in strategy must be listed out and they must be realistic they must be obtainable and they must make financial sense not just list out and and do there must be a rationale it must be understood by all and it must be they must be clear particularly the owners must must approve of it the resource implications of a change in strategy may include investment in labor saving technology well, this may require financial resources, significant financial resources, uh, but it may also impact on morale within the business, so that the workers that are left may not be very happy. It could be the case that there's outsourcing, in which case part of the production process is given to another company to produce and the components are bought in from outside. Again, it may affect the staff in the business and their perception of their worth to the business, their their value to the business. It may, le it may lead to people leaving in fact. Could also lead to joint ventures where the companies don't quite merge but they have such agreements that 
they're almost seen as the same company but they make components for each other and uh, <clears throat> that makes economic sense perhaps buying one large machine and supplying two companies with similar products of the machine that makes sense so joint ventures could be a logical way to go in looking at the human resource part clearly bear in mind there are financial implications here the overwhelming uh, problem in all of this are the financial implications of change and in this case looking at the human resources how to manage the human resources how to improve human resources but there are financial implications to all of that in addition to the more explicit financial implications are listed at the outset now let's look at physical resources now these include production facilities clearly costly the location and proximity to distribution facilities and also to the labor force that's important it's pointless having a business that's away a long way away from the workforce people will not travel a long time to get there day in day out and also to distribution a good distribution channels a good road network or rail network or sea network depending on where it is that's important to make sure that the the products can be got to market I'm speaking here again like it's physical products physical resources uh, I realize that as we move towards a more service based economy and with the internet uh, work can easily be transferred down a line very very quickly but for the tactile things the things we can touch the things that we want we're still talking here in physical terms the capacity of the current plant and its appropriateness to change well that's something that finance people the cost accountants the management accountants these people are constantly monitoring and it's constantly under scrutiny the appropriateness of the existing plant can it be upgraded can it be changed can it be moved around uh, can it be restructured in some way um, so there's always an issue with that and what is the investment and maintenance requirements to ensure that it's kept up to date again financial implications uh, this is a cost on the business but the maintenance of the plant and ensuring that the plant is suitable and efficient for its purpose is important the current production processes the current production processes should be compatible with a reliable quality output um, it's no good just making something and bashing it out and keeping fingers crossed that the consumer will buy it consumers want good quality product at a good price so the resources employed by the business should enable efficient production of a good quality product again I keep emphasizing the same point the financial implications of this are important these are a pure costs on the business but necessary costs if the business is to survive especially in the long run the production process should be efficient well again it falls to the engineers and the management accountants and the experts who are on the floor to ensure that it is uh, if it's inefficient costs will rise rising costs will have implications on the balance sheet and on the the value of the business so these factors should be looked at when considering the changing or changing a strategy the financial implications of all of those should be fairly clear 
Now, physical resources include marketing uh, facilities. Existing resources should deliver a good quality product and is or should be efficiently produced. So it's a it's a physical resource but the product produced is what is going to be marketed and to enable effective marketing the quality of the good should be very very high and it should be efficiently produced. The distribution channels, the delivery times, packaging, consumer experiences, um, these should be factored into the production process as a whole. So it, it's an issue of almost logistics to ensure that it, the whole business runs efficiently and the, vision, the business really is aimed at meeting the marketing objectives. Without a clear vision from the marketing people, the, the product cannot be designed, monitored and delivered efficiently or effectively. It must, there must be an idea of what is required in the market and the production facilities and the physical resources should be marshalled in such a way as to deliver that product. Marketing management should be compatible with the capacity of the plant to deliver according to marketing promises. That's just what I've said earlier. The marketing promises, good quality product, right price, right place, with perhaps guarantees or warranties or whatever. Um, in other words, confidence in the product. The physical resources should be marshalled in such a way as to enable this to happen and the financial resources should be in place to enable the physical resources to be in place to do that. Information technology, well modern labour saving techniques should be deployed where uh, possible. Now I know it sounds bad to say labour saving techniques should be deployed but Generally speaking, uh, if a process can be automated, it's cheaper to do. This should mean that labour is at, uh, sh should have more uh, skill, more capacity to compete effectively further high or higher up the labour chain, higher up in the business. So a better quality labour force should result and the more arduous and boring monotonous routines that can that, that operate at the lower levels could be handed over to robotics and to labor saving techniques. Now that's the, the dream, that's the that's what's felt. As to whether that works in practice or not, we we can discuss. We can uh, consider this in, in much more detail. Perhaps in some societies, perhaps not in others, perhaps it doesn't work, I don't know. It's debatable. But that's the idea. The idea is that labour is lifted out of the boring, routine, dehumanising work of making something over and over and over again. Give that to a machine, let the machine do it, and use the worker to do something more constructive and better, higher up the chain. Efficient communications, well information technology certainly has done that and also constitutes a good bridge with the consumer. Um, it's, it goes without saying that the current internet, which I presume will improve immensely over the coming years, but the current internet is quite amazing in terms of its ability to communicate internationally. So it's uh, that is certainly a saving to the business. Intangible resources, well these include goodwill. Now goodwill for a business, it can be, a figure can be put on it and it does appear in the balance sheet. So there is a financial component here. The goodwill is 
the value of the tangible assets of the business and the actual. It's the difference between the tangible assets of the business and the actual value of the business. So if we consider the business to have plant, buildings, machinery, whatever, raw materials, desks, chairs, if we put a, a value on those, a realistic value, and it comes to, let's say, one million pounds or one million dollars or whatever, but someone's willing to pay two, two million, then the difference between the first set, the set which was the physical uh, value, the value of the physical assets, and what they were prepared to pay, that is called goodwill. That means that's what the business is worth. That's And it does appear in the balance sheet. So goodwill is an intangible asset. It's a very important asset. And it's determined really when the business has been sold. It's It can be assessed on the way, so how, how good the business is. But in a way, it's, it's a reflection of how effective marketing has been and um, the reputation of the business. So the intangible resources, as I said, the reputation of the business are partly a determinant of that. And the reputation of the business depends on reliability in delivery and honouring contractual commitments. Um, this is the history of the business. How, how well did it do in the past? But also on the product quality and safety. Uh, if the business has been making a quality product that consumers like and enjoys a strong reputation, some car manufacturers perhaps have a reputation for building quality cars and they have a loyal fan base, a loyal following. Um, so the quality of the product and safety of the business determines its reputation, which helps to determine the goodwill, the, this intangible resource. And also, how is it seen in terms of its employment? Um, do workers like working there? Are they loyal to the business? Do they say nice things about it? And what's the working environment? Is it a good, healthy working environment? And are there low stress levels or high stress levels? What's the management like? And then there are ethical commitments. For example, does it have a green policy? Does it look after the environment? Uh, does it look after customers and have a good aftercare or after sales service? Does it does it meet the expectations of the customers? These are related to, strongly related to marketing, um, but nonetheless, as you can see, it's it's very important that um, these are in place to enhance the reputation of the business, which improves the goodwill of the business, which is the intangible resource. Another one is brands. Strong brands are a, a valuable intangible resource. The brand name. If, if the brand name is strong, introducing a new product may, may be easy. Certainly a lot easier than if the brand was not strong. So the brand is also an intangible resource, as is intellectual property. Ownership of patents and or patents as some people say, trademarks and so on. These are important intangible resources. But this is what gives the business um, a strong position in the market. This is what uh, constitutes the goodwill of the business. And as I said, it appears on the balance sheet. It is an important consideration in valuing a business. So those are the resources of the business. Uh, we've got them down to a few here. All of them are here in this session because of their financial implications. So please bear that in mind. 
I hope you've stopped the video many times uh, while sketching here, made your own notes and padded out your own notes from your own research. But that concludes this video, so thank you for watching.